us about the war against poverty. standing here. 
and you were listening to a totally different statics presentation. <laughs> so when I grew up as a child, the images of <coughs> Ethiopia and the uh, Sub-Saharan Horn of Africa came in to broadcast, uh, and I neglected it. I enjoyed life. I was just a child. Uh, but after World War II in Europe, we made a promise. We said, we never want hunger again within Europe. So every government within Europe does their utmost best not to have hunger again. We don't want it again. That's the good part of the European Union, I think. Uh, but Europe saw the images and hunger came in from Sub-Saharan Africa. And those were terrible images of real starvation. Right now I think we have a, an, another challenge. It's less about starvation, luckily, but it's more about malnutrition. And when I got older, I was 17 years old, I think, and I liked music as a child as well, of course. And I liked the music, um, maybe the two persons here for, uh, in, 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 in the beginning, I know you, uh, and you have also uh, a connection with music, but it was the time of the Band Aid and the Bono and do they know it's Christmas time? And I was shouting it also in the disco thing. Do they know it's Christmas time? Feed the world! But I didn't know what I was singing, of course. So. <coughs> but you too was nice music. And We Are the World was a very nice song, USA for Africa. We are the world. Oh, it was very nice. But I didn't know what I was singing. And I built up a career. I started a family. I studied business economics. And I liked what I did. Making rich people richer was my task. Greed was good. The movie, everybody knows, I think, uh, from Michael Douglas, I think, is it? Uh, um, well, that was part of my life, the stock exchange, the dynamics of the stock exchange. But greed isn't good. Greed made me think I have to do different things. Uh, I have a bit of a struggle. Ah, this is what I was searching for. Um, as Natalia was introducing, I uh, went to Haiti half a year before the earthquake happened. I was on the market, and what I saw there really touched me. What you see here is somebody on the market, excuse me, I have to go one back, uh, somebody on the market was making muddy cookies. And the guide, Samuel, told me at that moment, uh, well, they, they, they mix clay together with wheat because they are so poor, and then they make these muddy cookies and they try to sell it for a few dimes. Uh, and they eat it and they don't feel the stomach anymore. And it really made me cry when I heard that story. But one year later I heard a totally different story. And it was about strength. I still don't know what is the true story, of course. Uh, but the story was that if you are one with the earth, and the clay has also is, is edible, but I still don't know if it's true, uh, but if you mix it, you feel strong and you're one with the earth. Uh, well, uh, I think it's interesting to do research which story is true, of course. Maybe it could be an innovation for the future. Who knows? But what touched me also is the survivorship of the people in developing countries. They are so strong because every time they have to face with tsunamis, they have to face with floods, with uh, or, uh, how do you call it, uh, the, the hurricanes, and they have to cope with every situation, and they stand up and go further. That's the story of their life. And the story of Darlene Etienne is really impressive. She's a girl from 17 years old, and she was saved by the rescuers in Haiti. And does anybody know here in the audience how long you can live without water? Three days? <laughs> Six days? Maybe six you could. Weeks. Six weeks? <laughs> That's without food, I think. Oh, yeah. But the correct answer is indeed approximately three days. Dale was rescued after 14 days under the rubble. How strong, you, how strong are people from development countries? Really impressive. Right now I'm working for Stenden. Stenden, I'm a lecturer. And Stenden is a nice environment. 93 international. Uh, People we, uh, in, of nationalities are walking around here. And my next that, uh, my next that session could be about Dale and Jen because I want her to be here and want to have 94 nationalities. Uh, 
Maybe that's a new goal for the future. But it shows that survivorship, uh, if you caught in the trap of survivorship, that you're only one step away from becoming a great entrepreneur. And there is also research done by somebody who believes that it's possible to come out of the survival trap and take that one step and become a great entrepreneur. So how fighting poverty? That's the next question. Stenden is also participating in a network called Universities Fight Against World Hunger. Uh, 51 universities join forces and want multidisciplinary action to do something about world poverty. I think that's a good initiative and I embrace it and hopefully somebody here in the audience says I want to join the club. Let's create a movement and let's do something because you, especially students but also lecturers indirectly, we have the future, we can do it. But how? I'm inspired by this person. This person is Prahal. I think he's the most famous management guru in the world. Even uh, more famous I think than Michael Porter, Stephen Covey, whatever. Uh, check it out on the Forbes list. Uh, unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. In 2010, he died. But his spirit is uh, bringing his work further. His theory is about the fortune at the bottom of the pyramid. And I think, my belief, is that it is possible to fight poverty with three items. The first thing I showed you already, the entrepreneurship. The second is about innovation. The creativity the people in development countries have to cope with the circumstances and our knowledge, if you bring them together, you really can make the most beautiful innovation. So. And the third is a symbiotic cooperation, and that is very important. Multinationals, local community, government, NGOs, and via an infrastructure of microfinance. In this symbiotic cooperation, I believe it's possible to fight poverty and to fight hunger. A few examples I want to share with you. This is a lucky fish made of iron. Iron, three and a half billion people in the world, half of the world population has a shortage of iron. So the nervous system is not working. Everybody's tired, can do the work, and it's very easy to solve, to put it in a pan and cook with it, and it only costs five dollars. And you can do, uh, you can cook with it five years. You can use it even here if you have shortage of iron, because it's also a problem here, but not that big as in uh, the development countries. This is an example to see if you can fight malnutrition, and research is already done in Cambodia, and the effect is already there. It's measurable that the amount of iron rises, with a very easy solution from a social entrepreneur in America. Another example. The cook stove, our own Philips, is making it. You can buy it at the Freibuiter if you want to go on camping, bless your people. You can enjoy it. And if you buy one, I think it's $100, uh, 100 euro, I think, they also buy one for a development country. How difficult is it? And what you see happening, less burning houses, uh, less wood, so every time they have to, to cut a lot of wood. So, the time they can use for different things. And it's much, much safer. Uh, and, it's all, and it's also good for the uh, CO2, uh, CO2 emission. Another example, the tree. Giraffes, they know the, the healthy food that's in this tree. Why not plant a lot of trees with a lot of good uh, things, leaves and everything is better, uh, 10 or 5, 25 times better. And again, the iron. Uh, so this Moringa tree, it's just a very easy solution, and even you fight deforestation. Uh, cricket breeding. They eat it in Kenya. They, they catch them in the air. Why not make a farm of it? Well, I see you looking that you don't like it. But, but if you go to the Albert Heijn XL, they sell it already between the superfoods. And sometimes they eat it even here. And this is the Waka Waka Lam. Maurits Groen from Haarlem is the guy who is having this social entrepreneur. After six it becomes dark uh, in development countries and there are happening uh, awful things uh, uh, like sexual abuse, etc. But you can study after six because the light goes out and with the Waka Waka lamp working on solar uh, you can still study. This is also one trip, two liters and you have 
cleaned your water for, with the, on the natural antibiotics way, colonial sulfur. And the final one is, all, uh, is again my connection with Haiti. Uh, Coca-Cola is supporting this and making a very ju nice juice of it. Mangoes are the best from Haiti. They are the sweetest in the world. And they have created the Haiti Hope Project, uh, making the Odwalla drink, uh, made for 100% pure uh, organic uh, uh, mangoes. Uh, fighting the deforestation because the pits go in the ground again, uh, having export value, and having the uh, people of their better life. Uh, and we are, can enjoy a beautiful drink. So, my perfect world is a world with zero hunger. And why not? Why not put it over there to have zero hunger? But to mention it more positively, create a harvest for the world. And maybe, maybe we can create a Kokomo. Enemies, but now I got to search and I'm a soul deeper. 